Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. This is the day former President Donald Trump predicted he'd be arrested in New York, but so far it's all quiet on the indictment front. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald. Sources with NBC say don't expect any developments today in the Trump grand jury matter. The next scheduled grand jury date is tomorrow, so that may be the latest that we learn if former President Donald Trump will be indicted. Jay Gray has more from New York. The waiting game continues here outside the district attorney's office in lower Manhattan. Crowds gathering Donald Trump's social media prediction that he would be arrested today by New York authorities does not look like it will come to fruition. The grand jury is not meeting today. They'll be back in session tomorrow. There has been testimony and, of course, a lot of talk outside of the courtroom about this case, and it continues. It all centers on a payout to former adult film star Stormy Daniels, $130,000 of campaign money allegedly used by Trump to pay his former lawyer Michael Cohen for paying off that film star. It's something that not only folks here in New York, but around the country and around the world continue to watch. We'll be outside the DA's office and the court here if anything should happen. For now, though, I'm Jay Gray. Back to you. Thanks so much, Jay. We'll continue to monitor that. This is a big day in the ongoing battle over a cell tower on an elementary school in Wyandotte. Parents have been packing school board meetings to voice their concerns about the T-Mobile tower. And at tonight's meeting, reps from the cell provider will be there. Nick Monticelli has the update from Wyandotte. So here is the cell phone tower at Washington Elementary. The tower has been here for years. It's the cell phone equipment up top that is now at question. The superintendent sent a letter to parents yesterday saying this contract with T-Mobile they have is essentially binding. It would cost them millions of dollars to get out of it. So they are looking at any other options they might or might not have. I feel like they need to hear us and like actually hear us. This has been an extremely heated and emotional debate in Wyandotte at Washington Elementary where a T-Mobile cell phone tower sits waiting to be turned on. When I think of cell towers, I think of radiation, I think of cancer. I teach at Washington and that tower is directly outside of my classroom and I look at it every single day. I am in fear for my grandchild who is in the building. I am in fear of my neighbor's children who are in the building. Even a third grader spoke at the last meeting. I want you to know how many lives you are putting at risk and all of the staff you are putting at risk. So I ask you please to make the right decision now. The majority wants the school board to pull out of the deal with T-Mobile, which would pay the district $1,000 a month. But in a letter to parents, the superintendent says it would be too costly for the school to back out of the contract, estimating the legal implications could cost millions and insurance would not foot the bill. Parents want the tower taken down or moved. The superintendent says T-Mobile has no interest in moving it. However, at tonight's school board meeting, the board will be talking with the representative from T-Mobile, exploring other options. This is not a small tower. This is very large. Too big to be on a school. I think most people, common sense says, don't put it on a school. There's so many other areas we could be putting these towers than right on top of a school. I'm back out here. This meeting tonight is the normally scheduled board meeting. Again, a T-Mobile representative will be there to, again, answer questions, see if there's anything else that could be done about this. It's also worth noting that even though the cell phone equipment is there and everything's in place, the actually active the actual activation hasn't happened. It's not on yet. They're still waiting for final approval before they flip that switch. We're in Wyandotte. Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, Nick, we'll be watching. Two people are in custody following a deadly triple shooting in Detroit. Take a look. This was the scene in northwest Detroit on St. Mary's near Greenfield in Puritan around 3 o'clock this morning. Police believe an argument broke out and someone started shooting. One man died. One man is in critical condition and a third is expected to be okay. A man in prison for a crime he did not commit has been freed from the Michigan Department of Corrections. Mac Howell is 62 years old and spent nearly eight years in prison. He was sentenced to 25 to 50 years for the 2014 armed robbery of a 7-Eleven store in East Point. 
He became a suspect because the clerk identified him in a photo, despite never having seen the robber's face. Now, adding to the misidentification, Howell walks with a cane due to a medical condition, whereas the robber was seen running from the scene. Howell is also six inches shorter than the description of the robber. Based on a review of those facts, the Macomb County prosecutor requested the court vacate and dismiss Howell's conviction. Mr. Howell plans to speak publicly next week. A Berkeley store will have to get a new door and rehab the building after an SUV crashed into it. This is the Cotton and Things shop on 12 Mile near Greenfield. You can see the damage done to the store and the SUV after the crash. 12 Mile was closed for a short time while crews cleaned up the scene. The driver of that SUV was taken to the hospital. Their condition is not known at this time and police are still working to figure out what happened. Well, we have beautiful sunshine out there for a second day in the road. So let's go over to Ashley Barrissey for a look at the forecast. Hey, Ashley. Hey there, Christy. And so this is the first full day of spring and it is sprung because those temperatures will continue to rise above average as we head throughout the afternoon. Beautiful look at the downtown skyline at this lunch hour. 48 degrees here in the city. 47 in Howell, 45 in Pontiac, 45 in Adrian. 48, though, is our average high for this time of year. So we'll continue to climb into the 50s throughout the afternoon. Yesterday's high was 50 at the airport. Speaking of the airport, we are seven degrees warmer than where we were this time yesterday over there and same at City Airport and then Mount Clemens seven degrees warmer. So anywhere between about five to 10 degrees warmer across southeastern Michigan as we're heading into the afternoon hours. Exact track 40 radar quiet as a mouse across southeastern Michigan. That's not necessarily the case though for the rest of the week. You can see how we have some cloud cover building from the southwest. So we will have increasing clouds today. Any snow showers stay up in the northern part of lower Michigan. Again, with our temperatures, we wouldn't even see snow if we had precip for today. So milder, less breezy, topping out in the low to mid 50s, but we do have rain chances on the horizon. We're going to time out when you need that umbrella for the rest of the work week and heading into the weekend coming up in your full forecast. All right, Ashley, we'll see you in a few. We'll